Hello friends, welcome to Advance Tuesday. It's snowing again and uh, people from around here tell me that this is a little unusual for this area to have so much snow on the ground, but I'm not sure that I really believe them. And they also say that it's a little unusual for us to have this much cold weather and for this temperature to be where it is. I'm really grateful that you're here, but you don't have to be necessarily an advanced player to listen in on our discussions here. You can be an intermediate player, a beginner player, whatever, uh, because I think that these things that we're going to talk about have an important impact on every guitar player. No matter what your level, no matter where you are, because you want to get better, right? Theory Thursday, we're talking about scales, we're going to be talking about intervals in a couple of days. There's a lot of things that you should know as a, a guitarist and as an advanced guitarist or someone who wants to be a very comfortable guitar player. And when I say advanced guitarist, I don't mean like shredding and, and all that kind of thing. I'm, I'm talking about someone who can really play. And you don't have to worry about what your next chord is. Everything flows really well because it can be that you are actually just playing the guitar effortlessly in whatever level that you want to be on. You don't have to be a fantastic player that plays 500 notes every three seconds. What matters is that you are comfortable with your guitar, with your instrument, and also with how you want to play and the style you want to play on. I learned as a piano student years ago, after studying with a concert pianist for about a year and a half, that I didn't want to be a concert pianist, that that was something that I did not want to do. I did not want to spend my time going after that kind of playing. You know, the big pieces and, and on the concertizing and all that kind of thing. And I also discovered what kind of guitar player I like to be. I don't necessarily like to shred. I don't like to do it. I don't care about really fast, uh, endless solos. Um, Yingwei Malmsteen does not do anything for me. I hope I said his, his name right. And there are other guitar players that um, don't appeal to me. But people like Steve Morse appeals to me very much. He has these bursts of speed that are amazing, but he also plays so tasty and so beautifully. If you don't know who Steve Morris is, uh, look him up. He used to play with Deep Purple. He's played with Kansas before and recorded with them. There are some guitar players that um, I like to listen to every once in a while that I'm not extremely excited about all the time. Alan Holdsworth would be one of those. Alan Holdsworth is a jazz guitar player and he has an interesting style. I don't love his music to the point where um, I want to listen to it all the time, but he's a jaw-dropping guitar player. I mean, I was this far away from him for about an hour and a half. One time at the NAMM show in, uh, in, in Anaheim, California, about 1984-1985. And the guitar players there would just look at him and say, What is he doing? How is he doing that? <laughs> and it was just mesmerizing. It was great. Um, another guitar player that I really like is Steve Vai, although he's not, you know, actually I don't even have any albums by Steve Vai, but I like to look him up every once in a while. Um, he used to play with uh, Frank Zappa when he first started playing as a professional guitar player. And Steve Vai is incredible and he's grown over the years, something I've really enjoyed watching, uh, his style. He used to be more flashy and now he's a little less flashy as he's grown older but he's a very good guitar player, plays really well. But one of the things that these guitar players all have in common is that they understand, well, they have a good sense of, of ear, I guess you could say. If I played this for you, okay, now that wasn't necessarily, now I just made that up. That wasn't necessarily a great piece of music or anything, but it was something that if you could just listen to it and pick it out and perhaps even write it down, that would be a really good thing for you to do, a really good exercise for you to do. When I was 
first starting to play guitar, I wanted to play some songs that I had heard on the radio, and I couldn't find those pieces, I couldn't find those songs that they were playing in the store. I couldn't go to the music store and buy them. And so I started to figure them out on my own. And in that way, I started to do my own ear training. So listening, being able to pick out melodies, bass lines too, whatever the bass line might be, um, that's a good exercise. And we'll talk about that more. Song analysis, this is really important, or even just piece analysis, to where you look at a piece of music and you figure out what the piece is doing, perhaps musically, chordally, uh, form-wise, meaning, you know, does it have an intro? Is it an ABA form? Is it through composed? If you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll talk about these in, in uh, uh, Theory Thursday eventually. But different kinds of forms are important. What key something is in, what kind of chords they use, what kind of chord progressions they use. Um, those elements are all important, and so song analysis is important. Sight singing is important, I believe. Um, and what I mean by that is, can you look at something on the music, and of course that means that you would have to be able to read music to a certain extent, and if I gave you a beginning pitch, let's say a middle C right there, and it went up and it said C, E, G, like that. Could you go or one, three, five? Can you do that? Now, it doesn't mean that you're a great singer or that you have to learn how to become a fantastic singer. That's not it at all. It has to do with the fact that you can actually hit the notes with your voice. I had a teacher one time tell me, if you can sing it, you can play it. And that really stuck with me. And so singing something, um, when I'm listening to something and trying to figure it out, a lot of times I'll vocalize it. And it doesn't have to be you know, like an opera singer or something like that. I just need to hit the notes with my voice. And then I can find them easily on my guitar or on the piano when I'm figuring things out. So sight singing is important. Uh, learning how to sing, learning how to hit the notes with your voice, this gets your whole body involved. This gets your uh, inner self involved as well as your outer self. Just listening to it, but also listening to it and articulating those notes and uh, finding out when things are in tune, when they're not in tune. That has to do with tuning also. You know, learning how to tune your guitar. Um, I use a polytune clip a lot of times. Let's um, focus in on that. I use a polytune clip. It looks like this. Steve Vai. No, wait, not Steve Vai. Steve Morris has used these. Uh, what's his name from Down Under? Uh oh. I'll put it on the screen as soon as I remember. TC Electronics got in touch with me and asked me if I would do a video on one. And they sent me this polytune clip. Now, they didn't pay me to say this, but um, I was pretty skeptical, excuse me, skeptical about it at first. But after I've used it, especially with students, I really love it. It's about a $50 tuner. I love it because the polytune clip picks up the vibrations and I can tune it in whatever situation I'm in, whether it's a, a busy restaurant or a party or just in my house, in a student's house with a dog barking or whatever, I can, I can tune easily. I also use different tuners on my phone. This one is called iStrobosoft by Peterson. Love this tuner. Now you'll notice that it picks up my voice. That's because it's coming in through the microphone. Also, I use ClearTune, which looks like this. And ClearTune, there, we can get that in focus. It's a really nice app. I love it because um, it has this dial that goes back and forth. And when you're flat, you can tell if you're, which way to go, which way to tune. This other app that I use right here, it's called Intrack Tuner. It has this interesting pattern that uh, you can see the overtones. See how that, those overtones, let's... 
Now see that little arrow, that little white arrow right there? It moves around. That's the fundamental. And then those other hills and valleys that you see are actually the overtones to the note. And so I, I use this as a teaching tool to show my students. So uh, what have we talked about today? Well, so far we've talked about ear training, song analysis, sight singing, developing your ear. These things are very, very important for you as a guitar player. And so um, just the fact that you can pick up your guitar and play it and play a few chords doesn't mean that you're a great guitar player. A lot of times the these different things come into play, the different influences that we have and the different lessons that we have. I draw on ideas from my voice teachers, from choir directors, from my piano teachers that I've had in the past, from my guitar teachers. I think about things. I had a, a choir director, I, I sang an audition for him, and he chewed me out and he said, Hal, you can do better than that. <laughs> that had no feeling at all in it. Come on, you can do better. And I remember that, and so as I'm playing, sometimes I'll catch myself and I can say to myself, Hal, you can do better than that. You need to do better than that. You need to play with more feeling. Um, just those little things uh, that we come in contact with. People uh, helping us and guiding us along the way really has an influence on us. I know that I will have an influence on you as a player, as a musician, some of the things that I'll say. And um, although we don't have this interpersonal contact, we don't have this, maybe someday we can. I would love that. But um, sometimes the things that you will hear me say, sometimes just off the cuff or randomly, you will think to yourself, I remember that, what Hal said. So pay attention to it. It's good to be with you today um, in your search for being an advanced or a good guitar player. You know, anyone can watch these videos. Um, you don't have to be a, an advanced guitar player. You just have to want to learn how to play. So I hope you'll stick with me here. Thank you and take care. Keep going, run out.